So we're going to look at an example with Gauss's law, specifically a conducting sphere. So I give you a metallic sphere, it has radius r, and has a total charge plus q on it. And I ask, what is the electric field at all points around the solid conducting sphere? So in this problem, if we want to find the field, we need to use Gauss's law twice. Once to find the field inside the sphere, once to find the field outside the sphere. And for the details of this analysis, uh, please refer back to the video I made on Gauss's law with a point charge, uh, because you'll find that the analysis is very, very similar to what we did there. So anyway, first things first, I draw a Gaussian surface. Uh, the surface has a radius little r, and I write out Gauss's law, e dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, and now I can start doing the analysis. So first, I can break up the dot product into pieces. Next, I realize that the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector is zero, so cosine zero is one. Next, I can pull out the electric field vector because it is constant at all points on the Gaussian surface. And finally, I can sum up all the tiny pieces dA and I get four pi r squared, the surface area of my spherical Gaussian surface. And so now, uh, when we're outside the sphere, the enclosed charge is just plus q, and all of it resides on the surface. So e is just equal to kq over r squared, which is what we would expect to get if we are far away from this ball of charge. Now let's analyze the electric field inside the sphere. So once again, I'm going to draw my Gaussian surface. Uh, you'll notice the Gaussian surface has radius little r, and it is inside the sphere in this case. So once again, I write out Gauss's law, and I go through the analysis. I break up the dot product, and the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector is still zero, so cosine zero is one. I can still pull out the electric field vector, and I get uh, a closed integral dA, which is the surface area of my sphere, just like before. However, this time, we're inside the sphere. And we notice that since it's a metal sphere, the enclosed charge is just zero. In that case, the electric field has to be zero. And so if we were to plot the electric field as a function of distance from the center of the sphere, we notice that it starts off at zero, and the moment it reaches the very edge of the sphere, it jumps up to kq over capital R squared. Remember, kq over capital R squared is a number, it is a value and then it drops off as 1 over r squared as you go outward from the sphere. So a few final thoughts. One, when we have a spherical symmetry, the analysis for Gauss's law simplifies greatly. And you'll notice that as long as we have the spherical symmetry, we can use the same methodology over and over to uh, simplify Gauss's law. Uh, second, a couple questions. So how would this change for an insulating sphere of charge? Um, try and figure that out yourself. I'm also going to make a video on that in the future. And next, in my analysis, what is the difference between kq over little r squared and kq over big r squared? I'll give you a hint. One of those represents an equation or a function, and one of those represents a value of that equation or function.